My name is Vadim Krasnolki and I represent Media Center of Ukraine. I'm welcoming all journalists who joined us in order to spread the truth about the war in Ukraine. This war actually and has entered into all spheres of our life and affected all spheres of our life. Today we are going to talk about education. So our guest today is Serhii Skarlet, the Minister of Education and Science of Ukraine. My first question for you is that recently the ministry has taken a decision about the new amended rules of admission to universities and colleges. Can you talk about that, please? Did he? Can you hear us? Good afternoon. I can hear you, and as far as I understand, uh, your question is about the new rules of admission to universities and colleges. That is correct. Could you give us an overview? There were some technical difficulties. Thank you very much for taking Since we are talking about the development Here, there will be a change in the admission to universities and colleges. Independent test has also been alterated a little bit. Children will not take four tests, instead, they will take one test, which will be a national and multi subject test. There will be three different sessions so that everybody has to take the same test. School leavers um, will take the decision to get registered for one of the sessions. There will be altogether 28 sessions. The exam will consist of three subjects, Ukrainian language, mathematics, and history of Ukraine. I hope that all these things will be finalized and published in the Ukrainian newspapers by the end of today. We had a meeting with uh, the leaders of uh, universities, of regional schools, we had the student centers about the process of the admission, so, and we will try to finalize the rules of admission by the end of the day. Moreover, we will also have a chance to offer online mock tests to our students before they take the real test, so that all school leavers and universities can take advantage of this before they send the admission to the preparation for the exam. Could you give us an overview about um, the schools, uh, how they function? Uh, I understand the children go to school remotely, but when will they go to school in person? Let's talk about the times preceding the war. So COVID taught us a lot how to organize uh, educational process, enforce major circumstances, and how to organize organizational process online successfully. Today, more than 12,000 schools are open and working. We have 13,700 schools altogether. Around 450 schools are under temporarily occupied territories. 1,000 schools or so has been destroyed completely. 16 uh, offer three types of uh, three modes of education: online, offline, and mixed. Lviv region offers offline education, in-person education. Eight regions of Ukraine only offer online education or um, the children are on vacation. We've got 1,000 children, 1,800 children who are temporarily relocated, temporarily displaced. But they have a chance to join any school and continue education online. I'm proud of that, that uh, any child who got relocated from Donetsk, Luhansk, 
they, wherever they are, they can join educational process, they can join any school online. And this helps a lot as of today, so the children have access to education. We have 1,500 kindergartens working as of today. This is also very important. It's great input into preschool educational system because um, educators work, they receive salaries, the institutions are operating, they pay taxes, and uh, this helps the economy. What about the children who ended up abroad, who had to flee the country, and those who are on temporarily occupied territories? How can they continue their educational process? From the start of the war, our ministry, together with our partners uh, overseas and domestically, we have taken a series of measures, making sure that every child, wherever they are, even in temporarily occupied uh, territories, they have access to educational process. Our institution, International Ukrainian School, that has 36 branches in Europe, they offer education. So children can join that school online. So children, wherever they are, even on temporarily occupied territories, they can have access to education and they can eventually get certificate of secondary education. Moreover, we have a lot of um, partners, Atmosferna School, Optima School, uh, Lico School, etc. They are private schools, but they offer free of charge resource, free of charge platform, educational platform. This platform allows children to get access to school curriculum. For example, Atmosferna School accepted 35,000 of children worldwide, and these children have access to educational program online. Speaking of uh, tests, those children who ended up abroad, how are they going to take final tests, final school tests and admission tests? Can they, do they have to postpone it? Do they have to take it next year? Thank you very much for this question. We have been considering such possibility as well. We had uh, meetings on Wednesday and Thursday with the Committee of Science, um, Education and Innovation. We talked to our partners in EU countries. So let's divide this question into two parts. So first of all, these are final tests in order to get a certificate of secondary education. And the second, these are admission tests to universities and colleges. Children can final test. They can take it online. So we actually already tested it. We tried and tested it during the COVID time. Speaking of admission tests, for example, some of the children, some of the school leavers are in EU. I had a chance to talk to my colleagues from EU countries, uh, from uh, the Ministry of Education. We together are building the network of uh, centers where children can take such a test, admission test to universities and colleges abroad. So that could be done at universities or in independent testing centers. It's very important for us because we want our young people to come back and build Ukraine. Another question. Ukraine was very popular and attractive country for foreign students. A lot of students from other countries were coming to get their education um, in Ukraine. You're absolutely right. 80,000 students um, were students of Ukrainian universities and um, they were foreigners. That was um, something we took proud, pride on. And that means that there is a trust to the system of our education. Today, we are also considering remote admission tests for such students because we want our education to be in demand worldwide regardless of security situation uh, in the world. Ukraine is going to live, stay with Ukraine, glory to Ukraine, glory to heroes. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So I'll just remind you that uh, our guest was Serhii Skarlet, Minister of Education and Science of Ukraine.